go. Oh, yeah, that's good fish. <gasps> oh my God, he's jumping like crazy. Makes me nervous. Thanks for joining me today. It's winter, it's cold, it's windy, but you know the draw is just too great. As you can see, it may look nice out here, but it's pretty bitter cold. I'm hoping to catch a nice red band today. I'm in Eastern Oregon and just happy to be out here for a couple hours. And I appreciate you joining me on this trip. Oh, by the way, we'll be talking some tactics on this video. So if you want to learn a little bit about avoiding tangles, some techniques that I'm using on the river to help you catch more fish, stick around. You might learn something and hopefully we'll catch a fish. All right, let's get down to my favorite spot. Let's do this fish on. Wow. Whoops. So be sure to secure your rod to, to the Old Pro's third hand. Otherwise you might lose a rod. So that's on me. There we go. Oh, that was a fish too. Dang it. Oh. All right, I got a pro tip for you. So when you're casting a double nymph setup with indicator and you can see behind me, there's, there's no room to cast, right? I'm gonna hook the bushes if I try to cast. When you finish your drift, kind of pull in enough line to where, you know, you've got maybe about 30 feet of line to the indicator that's dragging downstream and just make one strong single cast up towards you to the hole. And remember your fly line is going to follow the tip of your rod. So if you point the tip of your rod out towards the river, your setup is gonna follow. So try that next time versus trying to pull it all in and make a cast and then you'll get snagged behind you. Just make that quick flip cast to where you wanna run the next drift. So hope that makes sense. And that'll certainly help you avoid tangles and catching stuff in your back cast. There we go. That's a fish. And wait for him to take off. It's a white, white fish. A white fish ate my egg. Sweet. I don't blame you. A river this size can look intimidating, but when you're fishing something this big, kind of pick it apart in your brain, think, how would I fish a small stream? You want to target the offshoots. You can see the seams, the riffles. If you break it down in small sections, you'll find success when fishing very large rivers like this one. So I hope that helps you the next time you go to one of the big rivers. Don't feel intimidated. Just, you know, dissect it. You, you'll see the similar characteristics in these big rivers than you do the small streams. There we go. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh my God, he's jumping like crazy. Makes me nervous. Positive thoughts, right? Those acrobatic jumps have not loosened the hook at all. Wow, positive mindset. I just knew I was gonna get into something big today. And guess what? There it was. Looks like a big old red band. All right into the slower water. That's it. We got really light tippet using 4X. I mean, this looks like probably a 16 inch fish, I'm guessing. Still gotta be careful. Boy, they're strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, baby. 
Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Oh, look at that guy. Holy smokes, what a gorgeous fish. Wow. He ate the great big squala. He wanted the full meal. So what's cool about this fish is it's native. And that's super, super cool. Native red band. Just look at this guy. Just a beautiful fish. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Beautiful native red band. Man, I was a little worried. That thing was jumping like crazy. I mean, it probably jumped four times. I, I thought for sure it was going to spit it, but I actually did a little change up. I put on the biggest TJ hooker that I had. Actually, I think it's a Pat's rubber leg. Big green Pat's rubber leg. I figured, you know, maybe they want a big meal. And I dropped it at a little dropper, a little pheasant tail dropper, but he went for the big meal and I'm super happy about that. Right on, fish on. There we go. All right, I got two other pro tips for you. The first is you'll notice that I'm constantly mending my line back upstream. You wanna to try to keep that big bend out of the line when your indicator is floating downstream. You got a big bend downstream that it's really tough to set the hook. So try to keep as straight line as possible. It's not always possible. We got a lot of different currents here, but I'm doing a pretty good job keeping a straight line to the indicator. So you're always mending upstream. So you're always managing your line. That's a bigger fish. Terrible hook set. Oh, that was so bad. I was so late on that. The next is hook set. You wanna be quick on a hook set, but not powerful. If you're too powerful, you're gonna snap that line right off and you're gonna lose the fish, especially if you're using light tippet like today. So be quick, not powerful on the hook sets. Nice. I was so freaking late. Now, I'm gonna show you a tip. You see all this extra line I have here? I mean, ideally, you wanna get it on the reel, but I don't wanna have a chance to lose this fish. So I'm just gonna play it in by hand because I don't want to lose this fish by trying to get it on the reel. Gotta keep a tight line to the fish, otherwise you could lose it. Oh. So that's why you see all this line out here. So sometimes if you can get it in, great. But it's not always a, a have to. There he is. Zoom. All right, I told you I'd teach you something today. So this was my fourth setup. I started out with a TJ hooker, a small brown one, an egg, and I caught a nice little uh, whitefish with that, but then nothing, right? I pulled out the other rod and started swinging a streamer, nothing. So now I thought, okay, maybe they want something bigger. So I brought out that great big giant Pat's rubber leg. And I thought, well, I'm going back to, you know, one of the confidence flies, the uh, pheasant tail, flashback pheasant tail and I tied that on. Now I started varying up my indicator depth and finally found the sweet spot. So the lesson there is you wanna keep changing and I fish a setup for about 20 minutes to a half an hour if I don't get anything at all. I'm changing it up, changing depths, right? 20 minutes, you don't get anything? Change your depth on the indicator. You wanna vary things up. If you do, you'll have success. Just like that beautiful red band. There we go. Another terrible hook set, but I'll take it. I was so late. Just another pretty red band. Look at this chunk. He's just big old fatty. This guy, just a big old football. Seriously, what's not to like about today? And the great thing is, you know, we're in the winter months, it's cold. A lot of people don't like to get out here in this type of weather. So often I have these places all to myself. You dress warm enough and you don't really have to worry about the cold. So I appreciate you joining me on this trip, thank you. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about how to stay warmer when fishing, 
check out this video right here. I go into detail of all the things I'm wearing right now to keep me out here on the winter months and fishing for hours. And I am comfortable and warm. All right, until the next time, fish on.